When trying to improve an AoE 4, the replay reviewer is one of your best tools as a way to improve. After having it now, I wish every game has it, because I feel like I'm improved so much faster in this game because of the replay reviewer. Yet when talking with those I coach along with those in the community looking for help, a truth that exists is that many people don't even know what to look for in a replay, making it not as useful of a tool as it should be. In this video I want to break down what I look for when watching a replay, and how to use that information to craft goals for yourself to increase the speed of your improvement. Before we jump in, I do want to plug first this channel, like and subscribe, it helps an immense amount, and second, my coaching replay reviews. If you're interested in having your games looked at, or at a private coaching session geared towards those new to the game or in lower elo, reach out to me on Discord, which is in the description of this video. Let's get to it. Before you even use the replay reviewer, there's an important question you need to ask yourself. Do I have a plan I am trying to execute when I enter a game? Why is that my plan? For example, I entered the game on Gorge against the HRE as Order of the Dragon. I know that HRE likes the fast castle. With a smaller map, I feel that my best plan is a mana arm spam and then attack HRE right when they hit castle with a ramp push. Having a plan gives you something to look for and evaluate. Does the map support your plan? How did your opponent respond and how did you react? Did you spend your resources in a way that supports your plan? Did you miss something because of scouting? Without a plan, you are often just reactive without purpose, trying to counter enemy moves in a way that just keeps you behind, instead of helping you create or maintain an advantage. If you do not have a game plan, don't look at your replays. Instead, play a few games with a plan in mind. Even if you aren't confident in it, it gives you something to work off of. Next, let's talk about what to look for while watching the replay. There are a lot of things you can look for in watching a replay. To make it more manageable, I'm going to have us focus on a few things I have found to be the most helpful to the people I have coached. One is your opening efficient. If we're going to feudal, did you get 400 food and 200 gold at the same time to ensure you're getting the best feudal timing possible? For a dark age rush, did you split your villages in a way that got a unit out or a tower out quickly, then got to the resources needed for feudal as quickly as possible? If the answer is no to either of those, identify what resources you had too much of and experiment when to move villagers or when to rally to a different resource and a practice on to get it down. An efficient opening is critical as being too slow can put you behind, it means an opponent's unit is in your base before you expect it, and just leads to further issues down the line. Second, are you scouting regularly? A lot of people have coached scout well for the first five minutes and then never again. Know when your opponent makes a decision is vital and the sooner the better so you are not surprised. It's better to see that Siege Workshop come down instead of facing three Maganels in battle without any counter. As you watch the replay, were you surprised at an opponent's decision? Did you miss villagers hiding in a resource in the open? Keep your scout moving throughout the game. If it dies, build another. You find yourself making a lot better decisions with the knowledge you get from scouting. Third, branching path moments. A branching path moment are decisions that your opponent makes that force you to make a choice that greatly alters the game. Often the game is lost based on our reactions to these branching moments. These are good to identify and decide on how your decision played out. Some examples of branching path moments. Your opponent hits feudal and instantly puts villagers on stone for a second TC. Your original plan is to fast castle. Do you do that? Or do you switch into a feudal aggression to deny a good TC spot? You dark age rush your opponent and get them off the initial gold. Do you commit and build more dark age spearmen and tower the closest gold and deny other golds? Or do you rush feudal and use the delay from your opponent reacting to build a second TC? You rush castle and realize your opponent is more behind than you realize. Do you mask units and attack now, or try to reach Imperial? I could continue to do this list. There are so many instances throughout the game of these branching path moments, and often there is no perfect answer, especially when we consider each of those bonuses. Instead, the importance is identifying these decision moments and analyze how well your reaction or lack of reaction worked. The key look for in a branching path moment is the following. Did you commit to a plan? Often the biggest issue I see is someone doing two things badly. They see a second TC, and they build some units, and also kind of go castle, putting them overall behind. They don't have enough units to stop the second TC, and then they're slow to castle, and then they're not getting the advantage going to castle would give them. It is always better to go all in on your decision and commit to it to see the results. If you committed to a plan, where did it either go wrong or right? Did your opponent do something unexpected? In the future, how would you react differently? Four. Check the times you and your opponent fought. Did you build counter units to their comp? Did you micro units correctly? So for example, not having horsemen fight spearmen, but having them run past them and instead fight the ranged units. If you want to fight, did you take advantage? Did you pressure the opponent's resources or take space of a tower or keep or build up walls and defenses so you can't be raided? Overall, it is easy for someone to say they lost the game at this moment. And yes, that might be the moment that was the last straw, 
but often that is the result of many decisions made all the way back at the start of the game. This leads me to my last point. This is why I suggest you focus on one sieve, two at max. Using one sieve allows you to try different responses and plan, compare the results, and fine tune your decision making. Then, when you try new sieves, you already have that built in decision making that just needs to adapt to the sieve you're using. If you're constantly switching sieves, then you're constantly having to learn each sieve's bonuses and how they uniquely react to each situation, which takes a lot of time. Let's look at one of my losses to see these steps in action of using the replay reviewer. So we have a game I'm playing as Order of the Dragon against a Roost player on Dry Arabia. My plan coming into the game was to basically do a fast Imperial. Playing against a Feudal Knight Civ, especially when likes a good 2TC, I knew if I tried to fight in Feudal I'd probably lose, and Castle doesn't give me enough advantages. Going Imperial with the Palace of Swabia gives me the Villager lead, or at least enough to catch up, which will then allow me to get better units, such as the Hand Cannon Near, and my other units upgrade to Elite, that would give me the chance to win at the end of the game. I knew I then had a window. I had a window right when I hit Imperial to go in, do damage, before he could get up the Roos' really good late game of Siege of Strelzi. It also meant that I needed good timings. Did I get to Castle quickly? Did I get the Relics and get to Imperial quickly? And did I scout well enough to see if I could find advantages or attack in places that would give me an advantage? So we're going to try and watch this game quickly because I don't want to do the full 38. But let's jump into it. So I scout, and I'm not big on doing two scouts against the Roost just because uh, it makes me have to do more stuff and, I, and it makes me mess up my build order because scouts cost a different amount than villagers. They cost 10 more food, so it just, it just kind of sets you off a little bit. So instead, I send my villagers out to the closest tier pack, and here's something I know. I know that if he's going to TC, I can get these deer and get the castle, and two, I can put a tower down get that tower stone upgrade and just having five villagers on deer that tower would protect them if i can get the castle quick enough i can then get out my own knights or i could get out units to defend them before he can hurt my villagers so it's, it's a risk but the food i get from these deer is huge and it means i kill a deer pack without using my scout time a key thing that i need to first see is is my opponent going to feudal rush me or is he going to go castle i also stole some of his sheep he sent three sheep back and i was able to grab them go me so here i come drop on my sheep my timing's looking a little off since i had to go get the mill i did get to gold a little bit sooner but not by too much i then age up and make sure i keep villagers on food and on gold i do need some wood to get some basic upgrades such as a tower on my mill and a tower on my gold and then a barracks to get a couple spearmen out. The key that I can't do is make too many units. Seeing that he's on stone tells me I have time. He's going to go second TC. That's going to give me some time to get into castle before he really masses units to affect me. Now, with Order of the Dragon units, they are more expensive, so every unit I build is pretty costly. I have to make sure I don't overproduce. I build the barracks, and my timing's looking good. I have more food than gold, and it looks like I'm going to hit my food and the gold at the same time. This is why I have to make my first tough decision. And I decide to build the spearman because I wanted to get rid of his scouts. This is a good chance for me at these times where I feel like I'm making an important decision to check my opponent's view. What can my opponent see? His scouts give him good vision. He knows I've dropped a barracks. I can also see, could I have taken advantage of him at this point? Not really. None of his units are out. My scout hasn't really missed anything special. Another fun thing to do when watching replay is actually watch your opponent's camera perspective and see how they're reacting and viewing things during big moments so you can see like how they react. What, what did you force them to do? But that's not important to me at this point. I'm going to go back to my view. Keep running. So I build one spearman to chase his scouts off. This is, I think, the first minor mistake I'm going to make. I really only need one spear. I needed my scout to stay by his base, and if I see him start making knights, then I make more spears, because each spear costs 120, is going to slow down my food. In fact, I didn't really need to make this spear. Having the scouts there isn't the worst thing in the world. I still have a good castle timing, though. I age up. I bring him on my stable. He sees the stable, so I know he's going to react to that stable. 
At this point, I finally get my scout out back to his base and notice that he's on the boar. I'm going to send my scout immediately. I do also grab one of his scouts with my spears, which is nice. So I'm going to send this spear, actually two of them, which is nice. I'm going to send my spear forward and immediately push his boar to buy me some time. I've hit castle and now my sliding doors moment is kind of hitting me. This is a branching path moment. I'm going to get relics, but my choice is do I try to push or do I try to just rush Imperial? Knowing my Civ bonuses as Order of the Dragon, I can rush Imperial with pretty few units. If I can get up castle and put Springworld upgrades, sorry, not castles, if I can put up towers and get Springworld upgrades, and then also put up some towers and get cannon placements if I hit Imperial, I can basically defend without units in the early part of Imperial. I start walling up, I make sure I get myself some space, I chase him off the boar. At this point I know he's going to be lacking for food. I'm grabbing relics. I send my villagers down to a boar down here, which is going to be a great food resource. And then I decide to make a knight, and a horseman, and more spearmen. And here's my first big problem. I'm going to make the issue of doing two things poorly. After I've hit castle, I am not scouting well enough to know what is he doing. I miss the villagers on this food here. He's walled up, but I haven't scouted the wall to see if I can see any units. His wall has done a good job of preventing me from seeing what he's doing, but I don't see any units yet. If I haven't seen any units yet, that means he probably doesn't have enough units to actually push me. I also know him being 2TC, if he hits castle pretty soon, that tells me he doesn't have any resources to make units that come at me. So, I could have rushed Imp without making any units. That means I've wasted 200 food, 480 food, 200 gold, as well as another 120 food on a second spearman. Instead, what I could have done is just pushed him. He had no units. I didn't see any units. So my other option is I go all in on making units, immediately send him and keep him off this food. I know he's on 2TC, and all his food is right here. If you look at the map, I did scout this. He has n all his good food is right here. Deer, boar, deer, deer. So if I just stood here and kept attacking here, he had no good food left. But I didn't. I may kind of made units, and I kind of stripped Imperial, which puts me in a bad spot on both sides. So I did not react to this branching path moment. I've hit castle, I had a decision to make. Do I push? Do I rush in? And I didn't have the information to make the right decision. He hits castle, and I still don't do anything. I then see him come out and stop this relic, and he has spear, 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 spear. And this tells me he doesn't really have much. Not, not enough to kill me if he attacks me. Yet, I'm still making units. I make a Lance Connect, which is another 120 food, another 200 gold. I make another Gilded Knight, which is another 280 food. Take this food away. I'm going to take back 280. Another 280 is 500. Another is 700. I could be taking another Lance Connect, uh, these three Spearmen, which are 120 each. I could be at Swabia. I could be aging up to Imperial right now. And he couldn't attack me. I have two towers up with with upgrades. These units can't push me. They're not strong enough. But I don't do that. Nor do I just spend on my resources and push right now with these units. Because the units I have could beat what he has. Instead, I do a little bit of both. And thus, slowing me down and putting me in a worse spot. So now my Imperial is definitely delayed. So he's still making units. And I don't know why. I'm playing scared instead of playing with information. I then send this kind of raiding party forward, but he's already walled up. He's smart. If I had left my units here, I brought my units up instead of raiding, I could have just stopped him from getting the food, which would have slowed him down anyway. But I didn't. And, that, and it's okay. If I decided I can make units and age up, I'd be in a great spot. Or if I decided to make units and cut off resources, I'd be in a great spot. But I did a little bit of both, and now I'm stuck. I age up to Swabia, which is all well and good, but once again, it's a delayed one. And now here's my new timing. I need to get my upgrades, I need to push right now, before he's able to get to Imperial himself, and get his really good Roos ball that's really hard to beat. I also need to be securing resources with keeps, and making sure he's not pushing out of his base, but stuck there. And I don't successfully do that. With how much gold costs to increase a unit production, I should have picked one unit to upgrade and go with, which in my opinion should either have been my Men at Arms or my Guild of Lanxionect. Instead, I upgrade Horsemen, 
and I'm upgrading men in arms, it's just a lot. It's not going to be effective. I really need to attack right now. Instead, I decide to stay here and wait. Not trusting the strength of my units. If we go to caster mode, we can actually see the comparison. He has 43 units, and he's going to Imperial right now. The only reason he was able to go Imperial so easily is because he had all of these food resources right here, which powered him to get to Imperial and make these units. If I cut off his resources in Castle, he wouldn't be able to do this. If I been able to reach Imperial earlier, I would have had more uh, villagers, I could have made a larger army, and be pushing right now. Instead, he both has a military that's pretty sizable, and he's going to Imperial himself without facing any pressure from me. I did get four relics, which was great, but a big issue Order of the Dragon has in Imperial is that my army is so expensive, it takes up so much unit pop, that if he just gets more units than me, it's really hard to beat him, especially with good units like Strelzi. So now this game is kind of in a bad spot for me. I'm going to have to build a military while creating my uh, eco. He reaches Imp and I try to push up. And he's smart as that he's built an army that is all counters. He has spearmen, crossbowmen, which take my gilded knights. And my metal arms can't walk into that. And there's just too many units for my Lancashire Knight to even do work. So now I'm stuck. If I had scouted, saw his comp, and went pure Lancashire Knight with some archers, I would have been great. But I didn't respond to what he was making earlier. So now I'm stuck. I try to make this keep. Once again, everything's delayed. So since I got to imp later, I'm dropping my keeps later. So he's going to deny this keep. And this keep denial is kind of the beginning of the end for me. I'm going to delay this game. I'm going to survive for a while. But this is the beginning of the end. Being unable to secure this central spot means he can now attack this gold. Which I really I should have put the keep down here to protect this resource instead of being greedy and trying to get the sacred site. He's going to push me off this gold, push me off this left side, and eventually overwhelm me through the right. I never really secured myself with stone walls, and I'm unable to secure resources, and he's just going to eventually overwhelm me, even though my eco does catch up. And that's kind of the beginning of the end. He now has a full military, and I don't. He can now do whatever he wants on the map. I have to rebuild, and it's just going to be very, very expensive for me to do so. During this time, I've completely ill-gathered my resources, I have a lot of resources, but I never match production, and now I'm behind. This seems so small, right? And it's and it, it, and the edges of this can be hard. But in multiple times in branching path moments, when I hit castle, I did not make the decisions that would get me an advantage, either pushing immediately and cutting off resources, or going imperial and pushing there. I slowed myself down, I put myself at a disadvantage, and now I have to play catch up, which is really hard. I hope this replay is a good example of how you find these moments and identify them. Lastly, some tips I want to leave to you. Whenever you're doing branching path moments, do reveal all so you can see what you're missing in your scouting. Did you miss him leave? Did you not check somewhere for a long time? Two, check your opponent's view and watch how they do things in response to your actions. What can they see? How could you have surprised him knowing this? But yeah, I played a really good player. I had a good start didn't secure it that happens and now i know in the future to be scouting a lot better when i hit castle to decide am i pushing at castle am i just going straight to end i hope this video was overall helpful to you and good luck on your future games